Good morning, sisters, brothers, siblings, on this Pentecost Sunday. Welcome to Plymouth Congregational Church of Fort Wayne United Church of Christ, where we offer the welcome, whoever you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you and your questions are welcome here. Well, friends, it's good to be together again even digitally, and I am imagining how you all um, might look today, wearing your red, orange, or yellow for the colors of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we can remember other years when we have gathered for this joyful festival in worship, and I trust that some measure of that will come through to you today. Well, in Plymouth Church, we have uh, decided to affirm four particular covenants of relationship with other UCC congregations. We are open and affirming to our LGBTQ family members, congregation members, friends, neighbors, strangers, anyone who would need a, a safe and affirming place to be authentically who they are as a child of God. We are a just peace congregation, promoting those ways through some, for some activism and for some personal involvement in those ways that will make for peace where no one is left out or marginalized or oppressed. We are an earthwise congregation taking on a spiritual practice 
those ways that will preserve and even heal our planet Earth for up to seven generations and we hope beyond uh, on, of life on this planet. And we are a global mission church, intensely local, intentionally global in mission and service with partners here in the city, uh, the state, and around the world. Well, friends, on Pentecost Sunday, um, we also today are encouraging you, if you are able, to participate in a special offering through the UCC, and it's called Strengthen the Church, and it is to benefit um, the local church in its expansion and in specialized ministries. So if you are able and would like to send in, make um, a contribution, please be sure to indicate that it is uh, the special offering strengthen the church. Now today, as has been our custom over the last several years, we have musicians gathered by Maestro Nance as a special band uh, who will play New Orleans style jazz for us. You heard them at the beginning um, as uh, we were coming into worship. And I invite you now to listen for a few minutes to two other selections that they will play for us. Thank you. 
Friends, may we be joined together in prayer for our invocation. Let us pray. Creating God of heaven and earth, and of all people of spirit and flesh, we center ourselves in worship on this Pentecost Sunday. Wherever we are located, gathered virtually through our computer and phone screens. We acknowledge that we are just a few of your people who seek to be faithful to your spirit's leading, the leading through energy and effectiveness. O oh God, recreate us in your image as we encounter you today. Let your presence and power moving within and among us infuse the world with your love and grace of divine spirit. Keep us, O oh God, in relationship to you and one another as we share these words of prayer taught so many years ago by Jesus to disciples which have been shared from generation to generation through the life of the church. So we now pray in Jesus' name. Good morning, Plymouth Church. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowedly be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I invite you to be in an attitude of prayer with me. Spirit of life, you have moved among your peoples and lands since time immemorial. And we celebrate today how you continue to move in and among us. We thank you for the birth of your church, charged with your mission of sharing good news and offering hope in every place we find ourselves. We thank you for those personal commemorations we acknowledge and remember, for birthdays, anniversaries, life celebrations. We thank you for the many people who care for us, who look out for us and love us, who act as conduits of your unfailing love. Spirit of love, we also lift up in prayer our concerns this day. We pray for those who are sick, either in the hospital or recovering at home. We pray for those nearing death and for their families who are apart from them. We pray for those who are living with anxiety or depression, something more people are experiencing during this slow moving trauma of COVID-19. We pray a measure of healing of spirit and minds in whatever ways possible and the grace to accept what cannot be changed. Amidst it all, help us to be instruments of your peace and compassion. Spirit of truth, we pray for our world as well. For the places ill-equipped to handle health emergencies, for the millions without health insurance, for the 40 million newly unemployed, for those ordered to go back to work but without feasible childcare options available to them, for those who cry out, how long, O oh God, until we see justice? How long until Black Lives Matter in our society? We pray for those speaking up against injustice and state violence. We pray that protest be powerful, prophetic, and peacemaking. In this season of the birth of your church, may you help us give birth to a community and country that more fully reflects your vision for us. May we use this pain pulsating through our veins, our hearts, our community, and make something out of it, becoming a place where people are finally treated the way you call us to, to love our neighbor as ourselves. This time, oh God, we offer you any additional prayers, those names, those concerns on our thoughts and in our hearts, and we offer them to you. Thank you, oh God for walking with us, for inspiring us, for lighting a fire in our hearts and on our lips, in our bodies, that we may be witnesses of your compassion, of your love, of your justice, this day and all the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter two. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native tongue? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking of God's deeds of power. This is our sacred story. Thanks be to God. Good morning. The title for today's homily is A Church of Many Nations. Last week, I compared the spreading of the good news to the spreading of COVID-19. 
Today, I want to show what that spread meant for the early church. Our scripture is the story of Pentecost, Acts telling of the birth of the church. The author, known as Luke, has this event occur just as diaspora Jews have returned to Jerusalem for Shavuot, which is the festival of weeks, taking place 50 days after Passover. They have come to celebrate, and it is at that special time that the Spirit first descends upon the apostles. They begin communicating in the native languages of all those pilgrims in the city. The church is born. Of course, it's hard to know if that's how it all went down at the time. Luke has his own reasons for telling it that way. For one, he is concerned about showing that this Jesus movement arose in good order. Everyone got the same message at the same time in the same place. Now, this is in contrast to the more messy process we hear described in Paul's letters, where he preaches for years without meeting the apostles. So I'm a bit skeptical of a literal interpretation of this story in Acts. But I am very confident in at least one thing. I believe that the author of Acts was aware of Christian communities in every place that he mentions in our scripture at the time it was written. Churches have been established in these cities and regions just two generations removed from the conclusion of Jesus' earthly ministry. Those names and places don't necessarily mean much to us, so I'd like to share a map I found that highlights each named place. And so here it is. Here we see the Roman Empire in dark pink, some vassal states in light pink, and the neighboring Parthian Empire in orange. And it, each of those places in the scripture is on this map. Look at how widespread the church has taken root. There are a number of places in modern day Turkey. There are churches in North Africa, including Egypt and Libya. The church is in the capital of Rome. Syria and modern day Iraq have faith communities there following Jesus. And we even see places outside the Roman Empire. People from today's Saudi Arabia are part of this movement. And even people as far away as today's Iran, Medea, and Alam, people from the Parthian Empire who were sworn enemies of Rome. From this map and Luke's telling, the church has crossed borders and cultures, empires and peoples. As the story goes, they were all together. They were all connected. They were all part of one church on Pentecost. How something that could start with a few dozen peasants from Galilee could then reach so many peoples is itself a kind of miracle. I share this as a reminder that from the beginning, the church was a multicultural, multi-ethnic community. For hundreds of years, Christians were roughly equal in numbers between Africa, Asia, and Europe. Europe dominated Christianity later for almost 1,300 years, but our world is by and large now returning to that early ch Pentecostal church of many peoples and cultures. And that is something I think is worth celebrating. It serves as a reminder that even as we are residents of a particular country now, we are connected and part of something that transcends particular borders and boundaries. Our brothers, sisters, and siblings around the world experience the same spirit that we seek to demonstrate in our life together and in our witness here. And that's something that gives me encouragement. Even as the country we find ourselves in, the United States, struggles on multiple fronts to cope with the worst outbreak of COVID-19 in the world and with the continuing virus of persistent racism in our society, peoples of other places are praying for us, praying that we might be healed of all the harm that has been done and is still being done among us. 
This story of the Pentecost church reminds us that we are not alone. We have each other. And even in our differences, we can be filled with the same spirit and hear in our own languages about the mighty works of God, what God has done, is doing, and is yet to do among us. So on this Pentecost Sunday, take courage. The spirit is here, it is everywhere, and the church universal has our back, even as we are encouraged to have its back when others need us. As one song said during our music and faith series earlier this year entitled, Lean on Me. Lean on me when you're not strong and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm gonna need somebody to lean on. Let us lean on each other for spiritual support, for financial support, for encouragement in trying times so that the church universal may, through the Spirit, lean on each other and thus continue to show the mighty works of God. Happy Pentecost, church. Thanks be to God. Amen. On this first Sunday of the month, we have our celebration of Holy Communion. We invite you to participate with whatever elements you may have available, a piece of bread, a cracker, and a liquid, some juice, tea, coffee, or water. If you do not have them in front of you, please simply pause this video until you're ready. Now, there's been a lot happening this past week. Important announcements for the church, as well as nationwide protests, including in Fort Wayne. So I'd really like it if we could all be safely together in one place. But even as that is not possible, I am reminded again that we remain each a part of the body of Christ. Wherever we are, physically or emotionally, we are connected to one another and to Christ. These elements remind us of that reality and help us experience again that truth over and over again. God's spirit of love is for you, your neighbor, and the whole world. In the eating and drinking of these elements, we celebrate that reality and anticipate its full realization in our world. May these elements be again for you, the living and loving presence of Christ. May we be joined in a moment of prayer. Holy God, our loving creator, close to us as our own breathing and yet distant and mysterious as the farthest star. We thank you for your constant love for all you have made. We thank you for all that sustains life, for all people of faith in every generation who have given themselves to your will, and especially for Jesus, our Christ, whom you sent from your own being as our Savior. We praise you for Christ's birth, life, ministry, death, and resurrection, and for the calling forth of your church for its mission in the world, especially as we celebrate Pentecost. We are grateful for the presence of your Holy Spirit, and we offer ourselves to unite with the entire family of your faithful people everywhere. Merciful God, as sisters, brothers, and siblings in faith, we recall anew the words and acts of Jesus our Christ, that as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Jesus also took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, drink of it all of you, for this is the sign of the new covenant. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread. Bless the fruit of the vine, whatever we are drinking. And bless all of us in our eating and drinking together this day at our virtual table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in one another, 
and in all for whom Christ came. Amen. The bread which we break is our communion as the living body of Christ in our time and our place now. Take and eat. This is the sign of the new covenant of Christ's living presence and promise to us. Here we find abundant grace expressed through the fruit of the vine. Here we meet unfailing love through a cup shared with others. The cup of hope, let us drink. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now I invite you to receive our benediction. The Spirit blows where it will, so may you be ready to receive it when it blows on you. May the fire and passion of the good news, of justice and dignity, of God's love, set ablaze in your heart and in our community. May it burn brightly so that the world can see as you show that the Spirit lives in you, in us, and in our world. Go in peace. Amen. Yeah.